yourself? Yeah, I, I, uh, I can't complain. So yeah, I guess, why don't we get started? Um, the, uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll hand it over to Fanny, remember, but I just, one thing I just wanted to say uh, in advance of the agenda here is, uh, is that, you know, it's obviously uh, um, a lot of us just had a, a, a long night. And I think that, uh, um, you know, whatever happens here, it's important to realize that, that the, the kind of work that, um, that we're doing here is gonna remain incredibly, incredibly important. And um, no matter who wins, I think that the, perhaps the most important and most useful thing that we can all do is, um, uh, is continue to sort of build connections and build uh, useful ways of cooperating with, um, with people who, who don't agree with us. Um, and that's, um, that's the essence of what uh, the radical exchange movement is about. It's about coming up with better ways of, uh, of cooperating and, uh, and living together in a democratic way. Um, and that's, that's really just never been more important. Thank you, Matt. Um, you totally stole my intro. <laughs> but great, uh, you said it uh, greatly. Can, can, can I say one, one more word on that? Uh, I was just gonna say, Whatever you think of the president, uh, one role that he certainly played was forcing a reconsideration of many of our institutions. Um, and the outcome that uh, we saw, I don't think is likely to re remove that pressure. So um, anyways, that's one, one thing to reflect on. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, totally. And I, I do hope uh, this call, uh, as Matt said, um, give us a little bit of, uh, you know, positive uh, insights if, into the projects and, um, and the great research that is going to stay and, and um, you know, help um, us continue the great work we're doing with, uh, uh, with making our democracy better, um, whatever the outcome uh, of the election. Um, Nicoline, were you raising your hand? Yes, I was yes. raising my hand. I'm sorry because I did not put it on the on the daily order, and I would love to respect that kind of things. So before we start off with that, I would just like to introduce someone that has not been in the community calls before, and I kind of dragged him into it because uh, he has a like a amazing uh, initiative, a company called Vogdoni and they are uh, really promoting voting, like especially in small communities or in big, uh, in big ways and changing democracy in that sense. And they also uh, gonna have options about quadratic, quadratic voting and all other kind of models. And he was very interested in participating. So I, his name is Ferran, you see him there already connected. So just for you to know that he's there and you can ask him anything. I think uh, would be great to uh, uh, to get uh, any um, uh, any link or insights uh, that you have uh, on on the chat and uh, and Ferran, welcome. Um, if uh, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, but I would love to hear uh, hear from you. And again, the agenda. I'll talk a bit more about it, but it is um, um, you know a new experiment to uh, open it, and it's a work in progress. So. There's definitely space for subjects that are not on the agenda. Uh, absolutely. Hi, Ferran. Hi. So, do you want me to introduce uh, shortly me and Bogoni now, or we can add yeah, go for it. on the agenda? Or... No, go for it. Ah, okay. So, basically, I will be I will be super short. Uh, we are a project that emerged from from the um, Catalan referendum uh, three years ago. So a group of activists uh, that were involved involved on uh, decentralized technologies uh, thought that a blockchain could be a solution for um, voting. And then what we did is basically a, a, a stack that is a common good infrastructure uh, that can be deployed on different um, uh, nets like uh, Ethereum or XHM and so on. And basically, it allow uh, anyone to interact with a smart contract that allows uh, different kind of um, uh, 
configurations using different uh, flags or patterns uh, that basically allow you to create quadratic voting or even even other exponentials of voting. Um, also configure uh, the, the the value of, of or the or the weight or this vote, etc. And then we are focused a lot on uh, real world organizations. We have an application that can be already used. But now also we are uh, on the crypto space uh, uh, with token based uh, voting. That uh, this is something that is also emerging uh, at this moment. Um, yes, uh, we uh, we uh, our project is open to, to anyone that want to um, to implement uh, solutions uh, to the end users or whatever. We have an API and and so on. And I'm super glad to participate in Radical for Change. Uh, I have been following the project uh, since the, the beginning, even before maybe the beginning because of the books and so on. Uh, on yes, anything you want, we can we can speak about that later. Great. Thanks. Could you do me a favor and please spell the name of your company slowly? Yeah, it's Bob Donny. I will write it down also in the chat. I, I am on the phone. Ah, sorry. It's uh, uh, it's Vogdoni. It's V O C D O N I yeah. dot I U. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, a lot to uh, to come. So this is a uh, uh, this is uh, I'm glad uh, uh, you're uh, joining our call and um, um, thank you and. I uh, is there any see anybody else who is new to the to the call um, and to radical exchange? I see many uh, uh, known uh, names. So I mean, you have time to introduce yourself even in the chat. I don't want to put anybody on on the spot. Um, so I just wanted to give a. A small intro to um, to what we are aiming for for these community calls. Uh, we we do want uh, to make them more engaging and uh, and really hearing uh, the topics uh, you would want to hear about. And um, with the goal of uh, slowly uh, but surely making um, uh, making our way to a um, to an efficient uh, voting system, uh, either like up and down voting or quadratic voting um, uh, for picking um, subjects for the agenda. Um, we started uh, in a very simple way, just asking uh, you in a form um, uh, what topics you would want to cover. Obviously, it's just a start. So if not today, uh, then the next uh, agenda. And as Nicolene, like any, any subjects you want to bring up, um, this is uh also uh, very welcome and uh so we did uh, just a, a short experiment on uh, just or, uh, like i shared the agenda in the chat and uh um just organizing like uh the subjects uh in um you know just a uh, number of time they were uh, requested so it just gives us a little bit more structure and uh, also gives you uh more voice to the table uh, as well um, and one subject that people were particularly interesting, uh, interested about uh, was the uh, new uh, fellowship uh, program, which uh, you will be the first to hear about because we, we did publish a page uh, about it on the website, but haven't uh, really communicated uh, about it yet. So I'm going to um, give the mic back to Matt uh, so he can tell us a bit more about that. Thank you. Um, all right, I'll share my screen uh, very quickly um, to talk about what this is. So uh, we're going to put together a um, about a ten week program um, uh, starting in in um, January, which we're accepting applications to starting, I believe, now or very soon. Um, you can you can get access to that on the website. And the idea, um, the idea behind this, very briefly, is is to bring together um, bring together sort of a small set of um, of uh, people working in different fields of endeavor. So, 
probably uh, probably many of them will be entrepreneurs, but we also uh, are going to bring in like artists, um, uh, people do, doing other kinds of of, of creative work, um, and work with a few you know work with you know sort of five to ten of these projects, members of the radical exchange community, a little bit more intimately and concertedly um, for a period of ten weeks or so, starting early next year, with the hopes of uh, of like totally totally you know giving these projects the full benefit of the radical exchange uh, network and community um, and the um, uh, it's, it's there's not going to be a um, you know it, it's going to be there's not going to be money involved so it won't be like there won't be funding for the projects and there won't be any cost to the projects it'll just be sort of a somewhat like an accelerator program but the idea is um, the idea is to focus on a different kind of value creation than traditional accelerator programs might be focused on. So in other words, where we're working with a venture capital funded accelerator, uh, you know, can tend to tends to push businesses towards certain kinds of business models and that kind of thing. What we really want to do is um, create a create a space that is focused on uh, focused on cultivating the kinds of projects um, that people in radical exchange and similar kinds of communities are trying to create, which is to say, building public goods, building public value um, that um, uh, that may not fit the model of uh, of, of like traditional um, angel or venture uh, funding. You know, there are of course. Um, funders out there that are interested in working uh, with this kind of project and that understand the importance of building um, building public goods and building infrastructure. And we want to um, really focus on, on pulling that community together to support um, projects in the radical exchange community. Um, so it's gonna be a great opportunity to uh, connect with funders, connect with peers thinking along similar lines, connect with experts who may be thinking uh, about the same topics as you. Um, and we look forward to receiving some applications. And um, uh, I think it's going to be, you know, a lot of fun to, um, uh, to work with with you on this. So, thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, I uh, is uh, Lawrence on the call? I haven't seen his name. I don't think he is. Uh, no, he's not. Yeah. He's not. So Lawrence is gonna. Uh, he introduced himself at the last uh, community call, but he's gonna work uh, on that uh, with us, and uh, you'll see more uh, information uh, about um, about the the program uh, on the website. And uh, starting uh, towards Thursday or Friday, uh, we'll. Uh, start communicating uh, on it. Um, there's a Thomas. Uh, there's a question from Thomas. Uh, if there's a due date for the fellowship submissions, um, Matt. Um, I don't remember the exact due date, um, but it uh, it'll be. Uh, I, I, I think we're, we're going to be trying to select uh, members of the program in in in, in December. So uh, you can check the website. I, I don't remember what exactly what due date we put on there, but. Some sometime around uh, a month from now. Yeah, I think it's uh, December. Um, we'll, we'll check, but this is. Um, I will share the page uh, with uh, you guys uh, where we published a, a bit more details. Um, yeah, exciting. Um, anything else, Jan, or um, that you wanted to add about the fellowship program? Um, no, just that, you, you know, it doesn't have to be the traditional um, kind of projects for startups and accelerators. You can think if it's a book or um, a project just, you know, that wants to go back to the community. Uh, and I'm just looking at the document. I think the due date is probably going to be December 18th or 21st, so before Christmas holiday time. And that's it. <laughs>
Great, and um, and we will uh, we will plan uh, probably next week uh, or uh, and maybe uh, a few other um, in the following weeks uh, um, Q and A's uh, about um, the fellowship program. So you can really ask uh, questions, and, and we'll have a dedicated call uh, about it uh, to give more details. Um, so stay tuned, and uh, thanks, Jen, for uh, sharing uh, the page um, and. Um, yeah, uh, so there's uh, just to, uh, um, there's another question. Uh, it can be a book project um, as well, Jen? Yeah, so if you, if you have something that might have ideas um, or is a novel and just want to explore also different ways of bringing that to people, um, that, so it, it can be, the ideas in the book itself, but as well, it's it's kind of a little bit more like how do we bring things to the public in different ways and get them funded. Um, so, you know, any project, if it's a, it could even be a film project or a mutual gallery or things like that. Great, um, and uh, and again, like this is the pre-announcement uh, <laughs> for. Uh, uh, for you, so there's uh, uh, way more uh, details to come. But uh, if you have questions, say, please uh, uh, feel free to uh, to send it uh, uh, to us. There's actually an email, right? Now uh, let me write that down in the chat. Uh, finish. Okay. Um, if anybody, can I just say one thing? If anybody wants to like talk about an idea, if you're not sure. Um, that is creative, just reach out to me at jennifer at radicalexchange.org. And I'd be happy to discuss. Go ahead, Fanny, sorry. No, 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 absolutely. No, I, I did send it uh, privately to Ferran, so I, the, the chat is like, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, confusing. Anyway, um, great. Yeah, uh, I'm sure like there's a, mi a million questions and uh, and and hopefully we can uh, uh, answer them. And uh, but uh, definitely stay stay tuned in the in the coming weeks. Um, another subject that we actually uh, did mention in the in the form that uh, raised interest was um, uh, this new tool that we. Uh, would like to try actually as an add-on to the uh, community call. So uh, when we end this one, uh, we will um, sort of reconvene for people who have time, um, so in 40 minutes, and want to continue discussions uh, on uh, in smaller groups um, on this tool called AirMeet. And uh, Leon, um, I don't know if you want to give um, a few more details about uh, AirMeet, just for people to know a bit more about it. Yeah, um, sure. I mean, it is, is um, basically a tool to host uh, whole events, like including speaking sessions and so forth. But what, why we decided to, to add this to the community to call is that when you enter the interface of the AMIT, you see different tables and we assigned some topics that can guide the theme for people sitting on that table. And as soon as you join a table, you will be put into a video call with the other people there. You can also set up a profile so you can see who is on the table. And we, we thought it just a cool way to, to allow the community to, to have, you know, sort of closer to real life uh, personal conversations among each other. Thanks, and uh, towards the end of the call, I'll, I'll put back the link uh, in the chat uh, so you guys can uh, um, can check it out and meet us there if you want. Um, thank you. Uh, so I think the next um, subject, uh, sorry, we're going a little bit like, I, I want to respect uh, the subjects um, that were most interesting to people. So um, it sounds a little bit like going from like, left to right um, uh, subjects. But um, the next one was uh, some updates on um, on chapters. And I know we have a few people from uh, different, uh, different uh, radical exchange chapters. Um, and, uh, and so would love if you guys have some updates on your upcoming events or uh, what you guys are working on or uh, any other 
calls to the community that uh, that you have this is uh, this is your time now don't make me like show you <laughs> oh <and> nicoline <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how many people are here to have the chapters, so I don't know. I'll just kick off just so somebody needs to start, right? Um, yeah, uh, of course, the... Uh, sorry, I look, I'm here with the kids. They are fighting. <laughs> that's okay. If you hear them on the back, that's just how it happens. Um, yeah, so uh, it's been a bit challenging because we had... We wanted to keep, like, personal events going, but that was, like, a little bit tricky. So the next one is going to be digital only. Um, uh, in the mean, the last event that we had was actually Griff uh, Green starting uh, presenting the the tool that he made for like the the common stack and for the CAD CAD, which was really nice. And there were a lot of people that had no idea about what was the comments and what was anything. So that was a very interesting. Uh, interaction at least for me <laughs> and uh, I mean we could ask like uh, strange questions which was entertaining for Griff too so in that sense we we could comply with the the extreme people that like don't know about certain subjects but could discuss about it so that was interesting um, and the next one yeah we would like to do with uh, Vogdoni and also to have people already voting on the date of the event so we can uh, we can also already include some voting mechanisms also to decide on when to do the events. So then we have a bit more uh, interaction in that sense. Um, also on, on my side, I'm working on a tool to create conversations. Uh, it's called Hot Potatoes and it's uh, basically the centralized audio conversation platform. Um, it also includes a voting mechanism, but was, that's just phase three, and we're still in phase one, so we are still developing it. Um, but yeah, that is also a very inspired on a radical exchange uh, way to to make conversation and facilitation of conversations. I mean, for example, the fishbowl uh, dynamics is uh, completely possible with this tool, uh, besides other kind of dynamics for conversations, since it's only audio. Uh, it's I mean it has some flexibility in that sense but I will uh, I will keep you guys posted when we have something to show so that's that's it from the Barcelona chapter for this moment we don't have so many events planned for now but let's see how it, how things go <laughs> yeah definitely uh, thank you uh, Nicoline thank you um... I see, I don't know if Mari, you have some updates uh, on uh, your upcoming uh, online events uh, in, uh, in France, if you uh, can tell us about it. Yes, hello everybody. Um, so so in, in the Paris chapter, um, we have now people from Paris, but also other cities of, of France and uh, quite a lot of people that are busy. So we try to have one agenda that is quite easy for everybody to understand. We try to, so we meet every Tuesday. Uh, one Tuesday out of two, it's just a free time, like for maybe um, working groups on some topics. So we started to think about writing one, one um, just little article on the, on the topic of governance uh, from our different experiences as researchers, uh, activists and so on. Um, and the other Tuesdays, we try to have some meetup. So one meetup is really like a free meetup just to uh, onboard new people in the chapter. And the other one is more like a conference style. And we want to, to select different topics that are very relevant to French topic. And, and actually we have like elections in two years that so many topics are at stake right now. Um, so we started that and we had our first uh, conference uh, the past month um, and we will have one at the, uh, the last Tuesday of this month and another one uh, in mid-December and we also have one plan also in January so we try to have a dynamic also to um, just to help people also to, to gather and connect like what we like is really to have uh, people with different backgrounds um, sharing their views, their insights, and having also some experts. So we we are still uh, struggling with that, but we we need just to to check if it's okay for all the French uh, members of the chapter 
uh, to have some session in English so that uh, we can open also those sessions to uh, you guys. And um, having also maybe some, I don't know, some, some um, views on what's happening here in France. And, and um, actually we have a lot of uh, movements uh, right now. Uh, so it's really interesting. And, and most of them, they have this very big issue of how to have a good governance when we start a movement, uh, when we gather different people having different projects and so on and so on. So we hope that we can have one experiment uh, with one of these movements uh, soon. Um, and another movement is very interested in having, um, I would say like, uh, some expertise from the network of radical exchange. So we might have uh, to sometimes to, to tell you uh, where we are on, on uh, those topics with those movements, what they need. And if you guys, you feel like uh, you want to contribute because you are working on one topic that is relevant to the movement, uh, you are very like a welcome, really hope like to bring more expertise and more tools uh, for all the movements happening here. Hey, hey Mai, um, one thing I just wanted to mention is one of the things that I've learned most profoundly from Audrey Tang is Tang is that she says um, that every demonstration should be a demonstration, that like every protest should be a demo of like a better way of organizing things. And that mm -hmm. demonstrations are most powerful when they're attractive rather than just repulsive to the people that they're demonstrating against. Um, and uh, that I think is really the great opportunity. I think that's what made things work in Taiwan is combining the social movement with this sort of fork to merge type attitude. And uh, so I, I hope you all can bring that story to people and, and help them think about um, the power that they could bring if they have uh, better means of governance to propose. Yeah, and uh, it's so it's so true. I, I do think that one of the biggest issue that explain a lot of failures in what's happening here in France is often like uh, this inability to to build one narrative that is uh, uh, just uh, inspiring all the people. And um, I, I do think that uh, like radical exchange is giving like a a new way to think and uh, some openness that is so important because then people can really like uh, try to build their own um, imagination, land and uh, new policies and so on. But uh, yeah, it's definitely one of the biggest issues. So we hope that uh, just, yeah, just uh, being like supportive for this movement can bring that also completely. Thank you for the, the, the advice. Thanks, Mai. Um, I have a question about the, um, uh, your uh, your labs uh, that you wanted to um, you know implement uh, in the for the long run and 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 in view of the French election in twenty twenty two. Any any update on that? Or details you want to share? Uh, yeah. So uh, so those um, those two movements I'm talking about uh, would be like. Uh, the one um, where we will be involved through the lab. Uh, so one is called um, the meeting of the justices. And so one of the most important um, uh, people are trying to raise awareness on the people on the fact that uh, we are facing two big challenges in the social movement, which is like the social movement itself, but also like uh, the, uh, the need to go to a, a green a green deal here in France as well, and how we can have all the people, even like the poorest ones that are suffering the more, but like those inequalities from uh, the ecological uh, issue, um, be involved and be secure in that. Um, so what is very interesting is that it's a gathering of 200 different uh, organizations, movements, and so on. Um, and so what uh, they have been doing is one gathering one month ago, and they try to um, how to say that uh, to have two different uh, objectives. One is really like thinking about what should be uh, done from 2022 in France after the elections. 
And so there are so many topics because they are gathering so many people from different backgrounds and it's quite difficult. And then they were not able to really put some priorities or understand how, um, how they can um, interconnect the topics and so on. So they have a big issue in taking decisions, I think, in the process. Um, so what would be like very interesting for them is uh, one, testing international voting, but also maybe other other platforms. I don't know, maybe you can try also to use police. Um, so this is something that we can dig with them and, and make a real experiment and see what is fitting to the needs. And the second thing is that um, in developing all their topics, of course, that uh, those people are activists or researchers and so on working on some topics, but sometimes they struggle to interconnect and think how the system will should be next and so um what i think interesting is really like uh, having also this opportunity to to talk about uh, how social abuses can be implemented and maybe meeting some people some folks in in the network so we try to do that um and probably it will be like in the uh three coming months uh, just to start experiment and i hope that then they can uh, have something uh, more stable and um uh, they say maybe they won't need us anymore. Uh, and on the second, uh, the second movement is like um, a new form of unions. So they try to do a very uh, large unions, but that is, um, uh, I will say, like uh, focus on the topic of um, social justice and and uh, and also. Uh, or to say that what, what they want is really like to think that the union is very powerful in the in the companies and so they can help the companies to go through a transformation and be more respectful from the planet and the people and so they start with citizens then they try to build unions then they try to compete uh, to get more power and uh, what is very difficult for them once again, is that they're, they're gathering uh, citizens that are quite different, so they don't have a proper program, and so the same uh, problematic, like uh, they really need to understand where are their priorities, and then they can just have their process because uh, it's really working. They already started like a, a few months ago, and uh, out of 27 different uh, professional branches, they already have four, um, but now they need to make sure that people in the company can work with people, people out of the companies, but still in the movement and the union and make sure that they're always doing things in the common good. Um, and so, yeah, I think that for them, uh, this is the same thing we like to try quality voting as well. Um, great. Uh, we're glad you're involved in, uh, in both and, uh, and, uh, and um, seems definitely um, in line with uh, what radical exchange concepts can help with. So thanks for explaining. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And um, anyway, yes, I will try to just make some memos and, and share with uh, everybody. But uh, it is kind of like a little bit because we just started our lockdown um, uh, like uh, on Friday. So we just need to organize a little bit first. Yeah, good luck with the, with the lockdown. Um, any other chapter, uh, any other updates uh, or questions? No, okay. Um, we had something on the uh, agenda um, uh, that I would like to uh, uh, to mention from uh, Jacob. Um, Jacob, you, you did write a paper about um, agent-based uh, models of QV. Um, and I uh, uh, would love for you to tell us a little bit uh, more about it and the project uh, related to quadratic voting. If you sure, hi. hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jacob. I'm a, I'm a PhD student at Northwestern University right now. Um, and the lab that I'm in does a lot of work with agent-based modeling. So I just recently presented a paper um, at the Computational Social Science Society of the Americas um, annual conference um, on using agent-based models to model quadratic voting where we can relax some of the 
um, idealized assumptions in, so, in sort of the classical economic models. So things like if there's variation in people's perception of their pivotality, how does that affect the outcome? Um, and then we've also, we also have a model of modified quadratic voting where you have a set of issues and a fixed number of voting credits um, to use in a single election. And so, uh, so far things, uh, I would say the models sort of strengthen the, the case for quadratic voting. Um, one interesting finding on the multiple, on the modified quadratic voting, it's the more issues you have, the better. And there seems to be a threshold that you need like six issues before, like on the proposition eight um, cali calibration that Glenn has used in other papers, you need about six issues before you can get close to zero uh, welfare loss. Anyway, so if anybody's interested in seeing that paper, I'll put my email in the chat um, and I can send it to you. And if anybody's interested in potentially trying to uh, uh, embed these types of models in models of other social systems, um, so, and one other thing, we're continuing that work now to look at things like what happens when people's utilities and perceived pivotality are correlated, or what happens when there's correlations between people's utilities on multiple issues. Um, yeah. Hey, Jacob, one quick suggestion is one issue that survey people have been running into a lot is like, if you do QV on some set of issues, modified QV, and then you imagine like you want to project it to a subset of those issues and how people would have made that trade-off like is that accurate i think that would be a nice thing to look at experimentally or like you know in an agent-based model so if you've you've surveyed them on a on a set and then you want like to know what would have happened if you only had a subset exactly so like it's it's a it's a, you know you can't know if you change the option set to something new but at least you could know if you drop some things out right sure yeah um and then what other things since i'm talking right now, I'll just mention very quickly. Um, I'm also part of a group trying to organize some uh, a deliberation around policing because there's been, there's ongoing protests at our university to um, calling to abolish the university police. Um, so if anybody has experience with deliberative democracy or um, recommendations on how to run things like that, that would also be greatly appreciated. Check out Polis. Okay, thank you. Jacob, this is Aliza on the phone. I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're talking about. Are you saying that if you're asking people to pick from a menu of items or, or rank them quadratic voting style, that you need at least six items on the menu? Or are you talking about something a little bit more than that? Um, so, I mean, that, yeah, so that outcome is specific to, you know, some assumptions in our model. But yeah, so if you have multiple issues on a menu and you have and one of those issues is something like proposition eight where you have you know like 50 where basically the mean utility and the median utilities are different you have like 54 percent of people that are against but only weakly and then a minority that's strongly um, in favor or whatever it is so in cases like that you know if you only had one issue then it's the same as one person one vote and so the more issues you have the closer it gets to the ideal of quadratic voting and people being able to vote linearly um, with their mm, utility that helps and it me seems out. and it seems like there's a threshold like around six issues for those specific assumptions it's going to vary based on the population obviously and how strongly people feel about an issue but um but yeah in general there will be some threshold the more issues the better but then obviously people can't keep track of that many issues so you can't have an infinite number of issues that helps me out. It makes me wonder if we could build something into a quadratic voting type uh, menu so that people could indicate what their top concern is with items that they aren't so uh, crazy about or ranking not at their highest. So knowing people's top concerns, what aspect of each issue is holding them back from being enthusiastic for it can be really helpful. Yeah, that, that's I'm not exactly sure how we structure that. That's kind of polis meets QV, which I think is one of the most important things for people to work on. Like, how do you integrate those two things together? Um, I would also say, um, if you're looking for wisdom around deliberative democracies, to look at Tom Atlee's work. Um, he's um, 
the book, um, the Dow of Democracy, but also his whole website, the co cointelligence.org. Um, and he's very approachable as well, but um, that's a great resource. Great, thank you. Thanks, Kalia. If you have the uh, the resource link, uh, oh, perfect. Uh, put it in the chat. Uh, you uh, you did it. Um, thank you, Jacob. Uh, uh, very interesting work, and uh, and uh, Jacob put his email uh, in the chat. Uh, so uh, there will definitely be more discussions uh, about it. Um, I think so we have um i think there were a few more things that i do want to mention that were um of interest uh, uh for the agenda um was uh leon if you have any uh, update on the git exchange uh to hackathon that uh ended uh on november 1st uh, so three days ago um if uh just quick updates could i could I jump in really quickly? Just one more thing for for Jacob. So, J Jacob, if you want to do, if you want to explore a little bit more uh, this topic of like uh, combining Polis with QV, I'm actually working on that and building a building a uh, a deliberative tool that the radical exchange community can use to make uh, you know make decisions. So, like we're we're hoping to to um, you know we're, I'm hard at work building something that the radical exchange community can used to sort of pilot this exact idea of, you know, combining polis with quadratic voting. And um, uh, so I've got, I've done some thinking about it and, and, and I think it's a great approach to the kind of, uh, of deliberative process you're talking about. So um, let's, let's chat. Um, yeah, so um, I think on, uh, on uh, last uh, few updates, uh, uh, I'll, I'll give the mic to uh, to Leon on the uh, maybe just uh, an update on the on the hackathon and uh, and maybe upcoming uh, events uh, with the foundation. So Jen and uh, and Leon, if you have a, a few words uh, about that. Um, yeah, the thanks, Tony. I mean, the the hackathon ended on Sunday. Uh, there were some cool submissions, but we are right now in the process of of checking them out and, and evaluating them. And and in late November, uh, we will host a a sort of demo event where we will share the the results that all, all the products that came out of the hackathon. But what we haven't set a date yet, but we'll share that on on all our channels. And just a, a quick thing on Monday, I'll be speaking at this event. It's online and it's free. Um, more details, I think a program will be added, but it's Monday at 11 New York time, Eastern time um, on decentralized OS. Decentralized OS. It's called Decentralized OS, and I'll be speaking um, I'll be speaking along Brittany Kaiser and David Ernst. Um, and I'm not sure which panel that will be, but I imagine it will be <laughs> about data. Is it an actual operating system? No, it's a conference. Um, I don't think they have an operating oh, system. Oh, 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 oh. It's a summit. Uh, oh, you're you're on the phone, so you can't see the link. Correct. Sorry. It's called the De Decentralized OS. Online um, summit. summit. Yeah. And if you look, <laughs> oh, okay. if you look on Eventbrite, you'll find it. It's organized by Singularity Net Foundation. Thank Great. You. 
and um, um, and we will have uh, also we're continuing on uh, on um, a series on, of podcasts and uh, live discussions like the one that just happened last week with Paula, Mark Reif, and uh, Jen, moderated by Leon. Uh, so this um, will be uh, you know published and happening on a, on a regular basis. So um, so that's exciting as well and uh, and actually uh well your data summit uh, uh jen is a good segue to um like some more topics uh, to discuss around uh data and uh matt i think uh, you wanted to dedicate some time so probably the um the remaining of the time or a little bit about a uh, new eu um regulation um and i'll yeah um talk about it I won't belabor it um, because it could be it's there's a lot to talk about. It's a, a long conversation, but um, the uh, the European Union or the, or the Commission um, recently leaked a draft of a new regulation for uh, concerning data governance, uh, which is um, very much worth reading to see sort of what they're thinking and um, uh, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's a really promising, um, document, uh, sketching sort of a, sketching a vision for the future of, of, of data governance and, uh, negotiation over data rights that is really quite in line with the, the vision that, that we have been putting forth for, um, for more than a year now. So it's, it's really, um, uh, it's potentially a super exciting thing. And I, I hope that, uh, I hope that the, you know, folks at the EU continue to kind of work along these lines. And, and if they do, I think that, um, you know, I, I have a lot of hope that, um, that Europe can set up an architecture for, a um, you know, a, a much better kind of data economy that could, you know, influence the rest of the world. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, for for now, this is just a leaked draft, so we'll, you know we'll see what happens, and it's not perfect, and so so on and so forth. But this is a really interesting um, uh, uh, thing worth uh, worth paying attention to. Is there any adjective on that word data, or is this absolutely any and all types of data? It um, it lays out sort of a vision for um, uh, for in intermediaries. For the you know the governance of, of intermediaries that are um, uh, representing the the data rights and interests of uh, of multiple people, um, so there you know there are lots of of different kinds of uh, uh, private and public and civic parties out there right now that are looking to organize things like data trusts, data cooperatives, data unions, all the rest of it. Um, and, um, it, you know, it's all very, uh, um, uh, it's kind of a blank space right now. And this, this document kind of lays out, uh, the, you know, Matt, Matt, just to be clear, I, I j just on, on the point of the question, it is primarily not concerned with stuff that's considered sort of exclusively individual personal data. That's not, it's not that it completely excludes that but it, it, it focuses away from that, just to be clear. More about data sets. Um, it's about uh, non-personal data. So, it, which is sort of a, uh, a technical uh, category in the, in the GDPR, um, but, you know, you know, yeah, I mean, the, we could, we could spend, more time, but I, I think uh, the the best thing for now is, is to is to move on. But thanks. Um, I think we're um, Orin posted uh, uh, an update on one of the projects he's working on, and um, and we definitely have time, uh, Orin, if you want to introduce quickly the project. And you already posted a, a link uh, in the in the chat. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I think, mentioned this project once or twice on these calls in the past, but uh, I guess 
somewhat exciting. We're, uh, we're midway through the first uh, kind of real money quadratic funding round uh, for Clear Fund. Uh, and so for anyone that's not aware of it, um, we're doing kind of on-chain uh, quadratic funding on the Ethereum blockchain uh, and using some relatively uh, new technology called the uh, minimal anti-collusion infrastructure, uh, which basically obfuscates people's uh, votes, uh, how they're allocating their funding uh, using zero knowledge proofs or a, a fancy math. Um, so uh, we have a, a kind of matching pool uh, and then a, a pool for the round. Uh, users contribute to the pool for the round and then using uh, ZK snarks, they, they essentially uh, send an encrypted message that tells the round how to allocate their funds uh, and then calculates the quadratic match uh, that each recipient is able to get from the uh, from the matching pool. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's up and running, it's live now. Uh, I can share my screen and, and poke around and show you guys the UI or you can go and uh, uh, just follow the link that I dropped in chat and, and check it out for yourself. Um, yeah, there's instructions there to, uh, to give it a try uh, and we would definitely love any feedback. Thanks, yeah, we definitely will check it out. Um, one thing that uh, we uh, also are working on uh, is uh, uh, quite like compiling a, a list of all these uh, implementations of uh, quadratic voting, quadratic funding, like salsa, et cetera, uh, all the concepts and, uh, and definitely listing them. Um, that's going to be part of the uh, new website release before the end of the year um, so that you don't just have the definition of the theory behind the concept, but also uh implementations and think you can already use uh for quadratic voting and, and platform and, and so on so um so you know like we'll we'll reach out uh, uh definitely with uh, uh with a clear way to um you know list all the projects that uh, you uh, you know of because uh, i'm sure you know of many more <laughs> than uh, we do so uh so thanks already for uh for giving us some more details um, any, uh, we have like five minutes left, um, so uh, definitely more time for exciting updates or uh, other uh, comments uh, and notes. Uh, I will drop the AirMeet uh, link in the chat um, if for those who have a few more minutes past the hour. Um, I mean, if not, like really don't, you know, I'm not going to take it personally, but, um, but it's a good uh, tool, uh, Aramid, as uh, Leon described, to have smaller discussions. Uh, it's been used quite a, a lot by Gitcoin as well. Um, um, Kevin, I think you're you know, somewhere uh, here. And uh, um, yeah, uh, but anything else um, anybody wants to mention? Hey, Tony, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hey, everybody. First of, of all, congratulations for American elections. Here in Brazil, we are so eager about the result. Brazil, everybody uh, watching the news all time, everybody commenting, we are eager. And it's good that it uh, has been peaceful. And uh, I have some news about the chapter in Brazil. Uh, last uh, week, we started our research group. And now we have almost 35, 30, five students and research. We had uh, inv inv invite guests, the professor Vinicius Klein. She's from Paraná, so of Brazil. And uh, she, uh, he did an uh, awesome job because his lecture was about the radical markets, the book, and uh, mm. sometimes about privatization and hand thinking. It was very useful. And I have a new because uh, we have tried to schedule with Tabata Amaral. She's a politician. And maybe she, uh, next month she's going to join with us in that meeting. And I was thinking right now, because you told about the fellowship programs, it's a good date to, to release the programs if she uh, enjoy with us the, the meeting. I think it could be a good idea to promote the fellowship program because she has a lot of attention here in Brazil. She's almost like, how can I can compare? Like AOC, she's very famous here in Brazil. So I think it's a great opportunity to, to release the program with her. And uh, Marco Bonono, she, she keep in touch with her. And I think it's a good idea. Okay, 
and thank you. And Jennifer, I watched the the last conference with Paula. It was very good as well. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it was. A, enjoyed it. Thanks. Um, I put a link into the chat. There is a conference that looks like it will be interesting tomorrow on the future of micropayments. Thanks, Kalia. Thanks. All right. Anything, any other comments or, uh, or Uh, I guess, Fanny, yeah. uh, I could really quickly show a quadratic voting, voting tool that, that Gitcoin launched in yeah. last month. Oh, it looks like I can't share my screen. But um, yeah, if you just go to quadraticvote.co, we built a tool that allows anyone to host a quadratic vote for anything. Oh, thank you for giving co-host. Co um, so, so basically, the idea here is to make it really easy to host a quadratic vote on, on, on anything. Um, and so basically, uh, you can go in and, and you can, you can create an event. You can add, ask a question. Um, and then you can define a number of voters, the number of vote credits per voter, uh, vote start and end date. And then you can add a bunch of, um, of, of options to that vote. And the cool thing that this does is <clears throat> um, it hosts the vote for you, but it also gives you all these unique voter links. So you can pass out voter links to your community and go in and, and use your quadratic voting credits in order to allocate your vote to different options within there. And so the whole idea here is just to be able to see um, to easily host a quadratic vote and to kind of like casually weave quadratic voting into into different things that that you're working on. So it's it's hosted at quadraticvote.co. There's no accounts. There's no sign up. It's totally free. It's just a utility for the Rad Exchange community and uh, for the wider crypto community to start doing quadratic votings, voting very simple way. So check it out. And if you have any feedback, let me know. Kevin, are you guys going to do a similar thing for QF? Um, yeah, so we've actually launched uh, another tool called WTFisqf.com, and that's like a, a, a utility where you can go in and you can define a matching round and you can define a bunch of contributions wow. to different grants. And um, the cool thing is that this gives you share links. So like if you come up with an allocation of quadratic funding that you think is really useful, you'll have a share link and you can go straight away share that allocation with, with someone else. So the idea is just to take these concepts which are, very, which are very elegant mathematically, but not a lot of people will actually read the paper or understand the Greek symbols and create web calculators with a neon interface on them so that people can, can grok these concepts in an easier way. So that was kind of the idea behind these calculators. If you have an idea for other calculators that we should do, let me know. I got a mountain of software engineers looking for projects to work on and would love to build more. One other thing I wanted to mention to people, which I think is one of the coolest things that happened with Radex in the past week, is that Richard Garfield reached out to us. Richard Garfield, for those who <coughs> don't know him, the founder of Magic the Gathering and one of the top 10 most respected game designers, maybe of all time, but certainly of like our time. And uh, he wants to do probably a series of games based on radical exchange ideas. Um, so if anyone's really passionate about uh, both radical exchange and game design uh, and wants to be part of us sort of helping him think through that stuff, uh, feel free to re reach out. Very good. Wow. How much information in like five minutes? Like this is, a, you know, real efficiency, Kevin and Glenn. Thank you. <laughs> Um, well, I just want to respect the, the time uh, for uh, everybody uh, and uh, I'm going to redrop like this uh, Airmeet um, uh, little test uh, if you want to uh, meet uh, now or, you know, like uh, to talk a bit more about some topics, uh, it would be great to uh, test with you guys. Uh, and. Uh, on this note, um, you know, still going to be a long day here in, uh, in the US, but um, as, as someone said, stay calm and keep counting. <laughs>
Thanks, Fanny. Thank you. Thank you. A quick question. How many people were on the call? 31. Oh, great. All right. Have a good day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.